So in this video, I want to give you an overview on the protein synthesis inhibitors and just going to discuss the basic classes and their mechanism of action. So we're going to again start with a favorite figure of antibiotics. And I have drawn here a bacterial cell and you can see all the major characteristics that we can target with the antibiotics. So in this video, we're going to focus on the protein synthesis inhibitors and their targets are the ribosomes. The ribosomes are the workbench for protein translation. And remember, the ribosomes are different between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, different in size and chemical composition, and therefore an ideal target for antibiotics. So we have a long list of drugs that all interfere with the ribosome at specific spots and therefore inhibit protein synthesis. To understand how these drugs work, we have to first review prokaryotic translation. So what you can see here is the mRNA. And this mRNA has been transcribed from the DNA of the bacteria and it's read from the 5' to the 3' direction by the ribosomes, which are this workbench for translation. The ribosomes are made out of two subunits, the small subunit, the 30S, and the big subunit, the 50S. Within the small subunit, you have two important binding sites for transfer RNA, which are represented here with these half circles, the P site and the A site. The RNA either binds to the P site or the A site. Recall that the P site is only bound once in this process of translation, which is during the process of initiation. The tRNA binding to the P site carries the initiating amino acid, which is former methionine in bacteria and in eukaryotic cells is methionine. So that former methionine is encoded by an AUG codon, exactly as it is in humans. So when the next amino acid is coming in on the tRNA, it binds to the A site, A for adding. And this is the first step in elongation. Elongation will first require the binding of the tRNA to the A site, bringing in the next amino acid to be incorporated into the protein. Then the next step in the actual translation is to make the peptide bond with the enzyme peptidyl transferase. Finally, once this peptide bond has been made between the two amino acids in the P and the A site, then the translocation of the ribosome, one codon downstream, three pair, base pairs downstream, will be the last step in elongation in protein synthesis. So any of these steps that we just discussed can be inhibited by drugs. The tRNA binding to the P site can be inhibited by the aminoglycosides and the oxazolidinones, where one example is linezolid. So the binding of the tRNA to the A site can be inhibited by the tetracyclines. And this peptide bond formation can be inhibited by the drug chloramphenicol. And then there are three groups of drugs that all inhibit the translocation. So once this whole ribosome shifts, three base pairs downstream. And these are the macrolides, the lincosamides, where the major example is clindamycin, and then the streptogramins. So they all have a very similar mechanism of action. Besides knowing which specific step in protein synthesis is inhibited by a specific drug class, you should also know from which side of the ribosome this inhibition is taking place. So if you take, for example, the P side, it could be inhibited from the 30S subunit, so from the bottom, or also from the 50S subunit, from the top. And so it turns out that aminoglycosides, for example, inhibit the P side from the 30S subunit, and linezolid inhibits the P side from the 50S subunit. This is actually not clinically relevant, but it's a lot of times tested on the boards. So it turns out that there are only two classes of drugs that inhibit protein synthesis from the 30S subunit. And these are the aminoglycosides and the tetracyclines. And this can be remembered with bi at 30 And AT stands for the aminoglycosides and the tetracyclines. And everything else is cell for 50. All the other drugs inhibit protein synthesis from the, on the 50S subunit. This concludes the video. 
on the introduction of protein synthesis inhibitors, mainly focusing on their mechanism of action.